Unless you've been living underneath a rock for the past week or so, few days, basically since last weekend. At the Tokyo Ham Fair of 2024, there were there was a lot of stuff debuted. And amongst my favorite items that were discussed and amongst the most <laughs> most of the social media posts I've been reading about there were basically three items that I want to talk about today I want to give you my thoughts on each one of those items three new radios I shouldn't say items I should say radios three new radios that were debuted or announced prototypes shown working models shown at the Tokyo Ham Fair of 2020. I'm going to give you my thoughts on all three of those, so stick around. So the first thing I'll say about the three items debuted at Tokyo Ham Fair is that there was one from Yezu, one from Icom, and one from Kenwood. There was probably a lot more than that. If you go watch Prep Ham Paul's YouTube channel, he was actually there, and he walked around and recorded a bunch of videos. I'm going to show you part of one of those here in a second, but I'll link his channel in the description below. Tokyo Ham Fair is on my bucket list and I really want to go one of these days, so I don't know. If they, they debuted all this new stuff this year, that means next year there probably won't be anything at all. We'll see. In short, I want you to realize that we have got a wide range of items here for multiple radio enthusiasts. I'm going to take you through all three of them. I'm going to tell you my opinions and thoughts about them. And I'm going to tell you which of the two that I'm probably going to end up buying once they do come out. So let's check it out. This post kind of made me laugh, uh, kind of in, in a way and kind of not in a way <laughs> on on uh, on X or Twitter, or whatever you want to call it. Ham Radio Basics uh, posted on August 25th, just a couple days ago at the time of this recording, was out looking at several Ham Radio Facebook groups today, the negativity about the ICOM IC7760 and the Yezu FTX1F is off the charts. And then he hashtags all those. And then I replied, he had a lot of replies before mine, but I replied to it and I said, well, it's Facebook. So now this is coming from a guy who just did a live stream about, should I create a new Facebook page? And I did create a new Facebook page and I'll link it below. So if you're into Facebook pages, go check that out too. There's always going to be complaining. Everyone's going to have an opinion. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But every time you read something on one of these posts about how, oh, that'll never sell. That'll never, nobody will buy that. That'll never sell. In the last 20 years, I can think of one time where that was actually true when a new radio was released. I'm not going to say which one it was. But people said that about several of the new Yezu radios that were released. Those are selling really well. People said that about the 705 because it didn't have a built-in tuner. That's one of the most, most popular radios out there right now. So everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's got an opinion, and that's okay. You have the right to your own opinion. It's all right. It's not a problem. This video is about my opinion. So if you want to make a video about your own opinion, feel free. Now, I must admit that out of all of these, the one that I'm probably the most interested in is this Yezu FTX-1F. Yeah, that's it. FTX-1F radio. This is just a really cool looking rig. Now, I'm not going to lie and say this is a brand new design. It does look like an IC705 in some regards. Okay, but a lot of these new HF radios kind of all look the same these day, this day and age. And when I mean look the same, what I mean is they all have their own unique type of display screen, but they all have a display screen. They're getting bigger and more colorful as the years go on. They've got knobs, they've got buttons, they've got top knobs, side knobs, bottom buttons, this kind of thing. One big VFO knob, maybe two big VFO knobs, and some of them, some of the larger radios. But for the most part, they kind of all look the same. I don't really think that's a bad thing. It's just something I noticed. But I will tell you this right here, and I mentioned this on a live stream last weekend. This radio right here, you can see from this picture, you've got a dual display. Now, out of all of the radios we've seen in the past, basically starting with the ICOM IC706, 706 Mark II at least, going through the 706 Mark II G, the IC7000, the IC7100, that's kind of where it stopped. Then you've got the Yezu 818, 817, 818, 857, 897, now the 991A, which is kind of in its own category. And then you've got, well, kind of, yeah, I guess the IC705 kind of falls into that category too. All of these radios that have full HF 6 meter and 2 meter 440 ohm mode. That's that's all the radios I just listed. That's the commonality between them. They all have HF, full HF, 6 meters, 2 meter and 440 all mode, not just 2 meter and 440 FM, but 2 meter 440 all mode. Some of them are QRP, some of them are 100 watts, but none of them have had a dual display up until now. I think there might be a way to hack one or two of them where you can make it show two displays, but this one's being averaged. 
from what we've been reading about when this one is actually dual receive which is going to be great for you satellite guys out there now it is only a qrp radio it's six watts on the battery I find that funny, honestly, because it's six watt. Now, if you remember correctly, the FT818 was also six watts on the internal battery. So maybe that's why they did it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good. Good. Good job. But it's one more watt than the IC705. So it's like Yezu saying, <laughs> but I don't know. It's just my opinion, I think. <laughs> Still 10 watts on an external power source, just like the IC705, but it is dual display. And presumably it has Yezu System Fusion in it. Surely it does. I don't know. I haven't read that far into it yet. Quite frankly, the digital modes in these radios that I'm going to talk about today is my least favorite feature in all of these radios. So we'll get to more about that later. But dual display, dual receive, 2 meters and uh, 70 centimeters all mode. CW, FT8, single sideband, awesome. 6 meters, same thing portable radio with a detachable battery we've got another picture of it right here this one is the back of the radio this is a cool picture of the back of the radio so you can see the batteries right there it's got multiple antenna ports it's got two different bnc ports right there an extra port right here on the back for a so239 not sure exactly what that is i'm not sure exactly what all these ports are yet but this is going to be an eat radio. This is probably the one that I'm looking the most forward to, honestly. I think this is a step in the right direction. Now, some of these people on this, this Twitter post over here, because another Twitter post I saw, this uh, post here from Stuart, M0TTQ, it's great that this rig is coming out, but the gap in the market right now is for a 100 portable mobile rig, not another QRP rig. Now, I can't say that I disagree with that. I can't say what, that I disagree with that. I think that the 100 watt market is not as saturated right now as the QRP market is. But you got to remember, Yezu has released two brand new HF radios since COVID. The FTDX10, which released right about the time COVID was starting, somewhere in there. And then the FT710 last year, they've got a field model and a model that comes with the speaker AESS. So the field model has a carrying handle on it, doesn't come with the speaker, so it's a little bit more compact for the field for uh, doing POTA and SOTA and whatnot. So Yezu's already been releasing new HF radios, okay? They've had two new HF radios released in the last four or five years. Great. And they discontinued the 818 and the QRP community, which may not be all of you. And quite frankly, I don't really, I don't really consider myself a member of the QRP community. I talk about how I don't like QRP, but I own almost one of every QRP radio. Yeah, so take that for what it's worth. But the QRP community has been asking when is a replacement to the 818 coming out? They had the 817, they discontinued it and released the 818. They discontinued the 818 a year ago, something like that. The 818s were flying off the shelves when Yezu announced the discontinuation of them. This is an answer to a question that's been asked for a long time about what is Yezu going to do to replace the FT818? And I think this is a very nice looking radio for that community. I agree about another way. And see, I replied to this also. I said, yes, we do need another compact 100 watt mobile HF radio turning the IC705 or this FTX1F radio into a 100 watt rig would be a step in the right direction. Perhaps with a deck you add on to the back of this radio, like an amplifier kind of sorts, or perhaps just taking this radio and making a new version of it that's 100 watts instead of 10 watt QRP. Okay, fine. Whichever the way case may be, whichever the way they do that would be great. I do agree that it's that we need some more 100 watt radios, but I just just remember that Yezu has been pretty much on top of that game more than anyone else has as of late. I mentioned Prep Ham Paul at the beginning of the video. This is one of his videos here. His uh, his channel just called Prep Ham Paul. I will post the link to this video and his channel in the description below. So check this out. This is uh same screen, same look as my 101D, the uh -huh. big one. It's That's definitely cool. bigger than the 500. For those of you who were wondering yesterday, I watched uh, Kate MRD Mike's Mike's video. It's, yeah, uh, Mike it's quite a bit bigger. Too. So just imagine the 705. That's about the approximate size. What a beautiful setup, man. I love you can see on the right over there, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's four of them in this display. There's one facing each direction. So everybody gets to look. Everybody's not crowding around one display. This is a smart idea. There's that one over there with all the, the wires, the coax coming out the back and the jumpers and whatnot. So what is that? <laughs> That's beautiful. 
So here on the top, HF, VHF, UHF, all mode. Um, I think it was 10 watts or 20 watts with a... It's 10 watts. Sorry, guys, I'm looking at the book while I'm trying to do this. That's all right. So by far, that is the one I'm looking the most forward to. Correct in saying I'm not much of a QRP guy, but I really like everything that Yezu has been doing lately. I have their newest dual band VHF UHF radio. I have their new, well, I don't have a 710 because I already had the FTDX10. The FTDX10 is technically a little bit more, it's got a few more upgrades than the 710 does. The 710 was made for a, a lower market, a lower price market. Nothing wrong with that. Still a great radio. Would love to have one one of these days. The Armalot guys are making a cage for the FT710, which made me almost want to buy one at the Huntsville Ham Fest because they don't have a cage for the FTDX10 yet. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so the next thing that came out of this Tokyo Ham Fair was, of course, this new Kenwood D-Star APRS mobile radio. Okay, and I found this Reddit article. There's quite a few articles uh, or websites, videos on YouTube out, out here about this. This is a great picture right here. I've got this zoomed in a little bit right there. And you can tell from the display that it, it's going to be a very large screen. It's going to be dual band. This is a black and white photo. So it's hard to tell if the screen's black and white or if the screen is color. I think the screen almost has to be color because I believe this is probably a mobile version of the D75, okay? Which, because it has APRS and it has D-Star. Excellent. Kenwood's really good about their APRS radios. It makes them excellent APRS radios. This one, obviously, that's the radio deck over there on the right and the screen on the left. So this one doesn't really fall into the whole put it in a backpack and hike, a, hike up a mountain with you. But this would be a great mobile radio for your vehicle. In fact, if this does what I think it will do, this might replace the ID5100 that I've had in my truck for the last few years. But we're going to have to wait until 2025 to make that determination. I am hoping this has the 220 megahertz band. I'm hoping it's a tri-band mobile radio the same way that the D74 and D75 HTs were tri-band. They are saying right here, if we go back and look at this Reddit article, he quotes uh, this hamlife-jp.jp, uh, -jp, a Japanese website. The company announced that in addition to the data communication system, APRS, that has been well-received on mobile transceivers such as the TMD710G, which has been used for a long time. This mobile radio also features D-Star, which has been well-received amateur radio community of TJH D-75 released this year, compatible with both the APRS and D-Star. There's nothing in this article. Yeah, wonder if the KISS TNC or just APRS can be accessed via computer. Kenwood has always used a real TNC, not the crippled version Yezu used. It would be absurd if they didn't do this as a function of DigiPeter and iGate. So yes, so the question floating around about this radio is, does it have a, an, an accessible TNC the way that both the D70, D72, D74, and D75 all have a actual TNC that you can connect either via USB or Bluetooth and connect it to applications like APRS Droid and some other stuff like that. But it's an accessible TNC that you can use to add APRS to another radio or another tablet or something like that so multiple version multiple things you can do with an accessible tnc unlike what yezu's offering which is just an aprs built-in feature now i'm not complaining you know kenwood and yezu are the only ones who are doing real aprs radios out of japan right now so yeah keep on with the APRS. aprs that's great i, I hope this radio is an actual tri-band radio i don't personally care about d-star i think they should drop the d-star get rid of this get rid of the d-star okay or lower the price okay if you can make a radio with d star and keep it at the same price and okay that's fine do, do one with d star but i don't want to pay more money for a d star radio because i will never use the d star feature one of the reasons a d75 is so expensive is because it has d star but i was able to sidestep that and say well it has it has a tnc an a, a remote an accessible tnc it has tri-band um, with the 220 megahertz band, which I personally love, and it has true APRS and receive, and the menus are easy to navigate through for APRS. So presumably this will be the same way. So my fingers are crossed that this one will actually have a 220 megahertz option as well, or it, it, it'll be tri-band and not just dual band. I guess we'll have to wait and see. It's understandable why the Japanese version wouldn't have 220. They don't have access to that band over there. But if this is actually going to be a mobile version of the D75, fingers crossed, it'll have 220. For all of these things, you might want to have an amplifier at some point in time, at least for the HF side of everything. Today's video is sponsored by Expert Amplifiers USA and Main Trading Company. 
Main Trading Company is now the exclusive dealer for SPE expert amplifiers in North America, and you can find all the models of amplifiers at the link below. Known for their excellent RF characteristics and also for the very good remote control capability through the CAT interfaces of all manufacturers, they are portable and lightweight for a full legal limit amp, and they carry a two-year warranty with repair centers across the USA and across the world. So special thanks and special shout out to Main Trading Company and thank you for sponsoring this channel. So we've talked about the Yezu, we've talked about the Kenwood and last but certainly not least is the brand new IC7760 from ICOM. Now, if you were at the Huntsville Ham Fest of 2024 or you watched my video, ICOM just released a brand new anniversary edition of their ID52. It's now USB-C chargeable. It's got a couple more options in it. Still does not have APRS, but it is a nice looking HT radio, and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one. This radio was debuted and shown for the first time at the Tokyo Ham Fair of 2024. This is basically, um, I think this is a later version or upgrade to the IC7610. It's called a 7760. And it's got it's got this remote mountable head here, which almost this looks like this looks like a large version of the IC705, but it connects via Ethernet to the deck in the back right there that you can see. And let's see if we have more pictures here. No. But they claim you can connect it to the lane. You can put your you can you can stick your radio deck in your house somewhere, connect it to your antenna, hopefully in the room that's closest to your tower or your antenna feed line point, wherever that is and then connect it into Ethernet, and then run the head of the radio from anywhere else on si inside of your LAN, connected via Ethernet, and you'll be able to remotely control your radio over the local area network in your home. Not a new concept. Flex Radio has been doing this for years. Flex Radio is very good at it. I'll be curious to see how well the ICOM stacks up to the Flex Radio performance, but this is a very beautiful looking display, some good colors, the kind of display that we've come to expect from ICOM over the last decade or two. And this is kind of a new radio. Now, again, I said at the beginning of the video that we've got stuff for multiple ham operators in multiple genres across the hobby. So we've got the technician class holders for the uh, dual band or ha hopefully tri-band Kenwood. We've got the QRP guys who like the, who are gonna like the Yezu. Or we got some technician guys who are going to like the Yezu because it also has uh, VHF, do, uh, UHF. You can do FM or sideband. So this radio will have features that are found on competition grade radios. 200 watt output, of course. Multiple an antenna connectors in the back. It has its own built-in power supply, which means you just plug it into the wall. 110, 120 volt uh, AC outlet in your home. Presumably, it's going to be the deck itself is going to be a little bit heavier than what your standard uh, 7300 is, maybe even the 7610. I don't know, but this one is definitely made for the competition grade ham radio operator uh, operating out of their home or some sort of remote station they've set up in another location. So that's my thought about the three newest radios we've seen announced from the Tokyo Ham Fair last month. By the time this video posts, I will be home sitting in the shack. And uh, that stuff will be a little bit... Everybody should have seen all of those videos by now. If you haven't, I will put links in the description below for all of that. Which one are you looking forward to? I was going through and writing my script for this video and kind of changing up a few things. And I thought of another video in the process of all this that I'm like, you know what? I think that needs to be said. So I'm going to make another video that sort of kind of talks about all this stuff. But I want to know which one you're looking forward to. I'm going to probably end up with two of the three. And the reason I'm not going to probably end up with the ICOM is not because anything ICOM, just because I don't need another competition-grade radio. I have my IC7700 right there. Now, maybe one day I'll trade that out, and I'll get the 76, 7760. I don't know. We'll see. But the Yezu and the Kenwood, I'm absolutely looking forward to. Going to be grabbing those as soon as they're available. So put a comment in the video below. Let me know which ones you're looking forward to, if any of these, and um, what you think about all of them and what you might change on them. 73, guys.